and to everyone joining us online from around the world. My name is Lily Irvilaiti, Vice President of Thailand National Science and Technology Development Agency. And it is my honor to be the moderators of today's morning session. This forum is joining uh, organized by the Alliance of International Science Organizations, or ANSO, Chinese Academy of Science, and Thailand National Science and Technology Development Agency, NASDA, to promote the concept of green technology and its contribution to SDGs and Thailand's biocircular green economy, one of our national agendas. Today's forum consists of three sessions covering exciting topics of circular economy, green technology, and the application of artificial intelligence in green society and creative economy. All designed to enrich green technology agenda also contribute to global dialogue in the green technology. Experts and leaders representing the governments, international organizations, businesses and academia will actively voice their opinion and share their experiences. So this entire session is being live streamed on virtual platform, which include Bilibili, and it is open to public. To officially kick things off, I would like to call upon Dr. Narong Sirila Warakun, President of NASDAQ and Professor Bai Chun Li, President of ANSO, to give opening remarks. First, please welcome Dr. Narong Sivi Rathwarakun. Professor Chun Li Pai, ANSO President, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Thailand's National Science and Technology Development Agency, or NASDA, it is my honor and most privilege to welcome all of you to the ANSO International Forum on Green Technology, co-hosted by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, CAS, and NASDAQ. Asia is at the court road. The region's rapid economic growth has often come with concern over environmental degradation. We are increasingly using resources at the cost of the environment. Many policymakers now agree to the necessity to upgrade development paradigm to achieve sustainable growth. Social inclusion and environmental protection must be at the heart of our efforts if we are to have long-term sustainable development for all. There are encouraging signs that the region is taking on board. The message that we must move toward low-carbon green growth. Many emerging economies have started to move toward a sustainable development model that makes green industry competitive and serve green technology markets. China, for example, has become the world top installer of both wind turbines and solar photovoltaic systems. NASDA has been actively working to support Thailand and our developing member countries in their endeavor toward sustainable development through technical assistance and policy dialogue. Many other countries have established clear targets to reduce carbon emissions. Therefore, the green technologies need to be widely diffused across countries through public-private partnerships and international cooperation. And we hope that this forum can serve this initiative. I would like to express my appreciation to our distinguished speakers for devoting their time to enlist this forum with their knowledge and experience in managing R&D and policy initiative to promote green technology. I believe that with our distinguished participants, this session will provide a productive and insightful discussion and help initiate collaboration among all of us. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Narong, for your remarks. And now please welcome Professor Pai to deliver his opening remarks. Dear President Narong, distinguished Ansel members, all the speakers, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from China and a big welcome to you all to the Anso International Forum on Green Technology. On behalf of the Alliance of the International Science Organization, I want to express my deep gratitude to President Arun of the National Science and Technology Development Agency, Thailand, for his leadership and strong support to this organization of this forum. My thanks also go to the People's Government of the Guangdong Province, the Chinese Society of Biotechnology, and others concerned for their efforts. This meeting is a part of the series meetings online that the ANSO Governing Board agreed to hold in 2021st, given the continuous pandemic with the goal to exchange and communicate the newest thoughts on the development in a number of major areas of the public interests. I'm so pleased to say that this meeting is being held in conjunction with the 14th China Bioindustry Convention in Guangzhou. It's a wonderful move. I want to congratulate and thank who I were involved in making this decision. And so, as a non-governmental, non-profit international science organization has the vision and the promote and advance the UN SDGs and the development of a global community with a shared future with a concrete international cooperation in science, technology, innovation, and capacity building, STSC. In spite of impact of the pandemic, ANSO has continued to grow in membership. It is now an organization with 59 member organizations representing 46 countries and regions. What is more, by overcoming the difficulties and the challenges brought by pandemic, ANSO has support and carried out various kinds of the activities with a strong support of its members in line with its vision and mission in the past year and months. It is efforts in the promoting of international cooperation in joint fight against pandemic are particularly worth mentioning. In specifically, the international cooperation in the R&D of COVID-19 vaccines, testing case, and drugs. Looking ahead, ANSO will commit more efforts and will make more contributions in STIC for global benefits. We believe only by strengthening cooperation and partnerships with other international bodies and other parties concerned could also contribute more to global good. On this note, I seek support from you all. Today's meeting is a theme on green technology, with a particularly focus on circular economy. The ANSO government board decided to take this topic because it is a great significance to global green and sustainable development. To address this climate change challenge and to improve our environment for quality living, all nations need a green technology and need to enhance circular economy. China is very much committed in this regard and to contribute it is best. Let me conclude by thanking you all. 
including the audience for your support to this event and also. I wish the meeting a big success and you all a enjoyable meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Bai, for your remarks. Okay, but before we start our forum, I would like to inform you that each speaker will have 20 minutes for his talk. And if the online audiences who join the WebEx system have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the chat box and those questions will be asked at the end of each talk. Please also be informed that all sessions will be recorded. Thank you. Now, this, se this session is centered around circular economy and biotechnology. And I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker, Professor Zhang Sujiang. He is the director of Institute of Process Engineering, Chinese Academy of Science, and also dean of Colle College of Chemical Engineering. University of Chinese Academy of Science and a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry. His research interest is ionic liquids and green process engineering. Today he will give a talk on green recycling technologies towards carbon neutrality. Professor Zhang, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, the Chairman, Didi. Uh, dear distinguished President Bai and distinguished Professor Naro, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to give a presentation on the green recycling technology towards carbon neutrality. I will. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. I will first I think the uh, that you know everyone know the carbon neutrality is a uh, inevitable way for the worldwide. Chinese President Xi has committed to move from carbon peak in the 2030 and carbon neutrality in the 2016. So it is a worldwide concern, not only the developed country, but also the developing countries. Actually, if we see this chart, we could see the developing countries per capita carbon emission is much higher than the developing countries. For example, China, India is much lower. But we, from this chart, we could see that in the ancient time, people use all the renewable energy. So the carbon emission and adoption is equal to one, means neutrality. Future, of course, we can also reach the 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 uh, use the all the renewable energy we can also reach this uh, like the carbon emission and the uh, absorption the neutrality but if we assumably use the 100 percent of fossil energy of course it's a problem now currently most of the countries for example china now renewable energy is account 20 percent but 80% is the fossil energy. But the future, if we want to reach the carbon neutrality, probably we should use renewable energy amount to the 8%, but fossil energy about 20%. But this fossil energy will also produce the CO2, but CO2 should be using the CCUS technology to treat it. So the now the developed country and the developing country, the, the per capita is different. But the for the developing country, I think it's a good opportunity to reach the carbon neutrality by developing the green technology. Now the from this chart we could see the fossil energy. If we use it, it will produce CO2. It's a 
cannot be avoided. One approach is we develop the green technology to increase the efficiency for utilizing the fuel, fossil fuels, and uh, save the energy capacity. But the more efficient, more important way is developing the renewable energy, such as biomass, solar, and wind. But the renewable energy is discontinuous and unstable, so we need developing the energy storage and the and the storage of the electricity and also may produce hydrogen, means hydrogen energy. So the ideal way future is the CO2 and use the electricity by generating using solar, wind, and biomass, then produce all the substance for the main car. Fortunately, the belt and the country are rich in the natural resource, for example, biomass and solar and the wind, and also the fossil fuel, for example, the, the, the OU, petroleum is very rich, and also the mineral is also rich. So the, it's a great opportunity and potential for us to collaborate to develop the low carbon green technology and to reach the carbon neutrality, not following the ways of the traditional one. So the IPE under the support of the ASO, we founded the CGT in 2013. Later, we founded and established the IGT in 2018. And on this platform, we gathered the worldwide outstudy scientists of green technology. Of course, including the scientists from the developing countries, try to promote the green technology cooperation and the transfer mission. Our idea, the approach, is through developing the Technology through the technology collaboration, try to cultivate the talents for developing countries. Thus, we could uh, collaborate for the longer term and uh, and uh, do more efficient. So, then in the following, I will introduce some cooperation projects. First is the biomass utilization. So, biomass in the Developing country, but the country is very rich. The current way usually it is directly burning or make papers. But in future, we develop in the green technology is separate the cellulose. Cellulose could be fermentation by fermentation to produce bioethanol, and also the lignin could be used to produce the like the material for the carbon, and also can produce liquid fuel, and also can convert to many kind of the chemicals. So this project, we collaborate with the Egypt. Professor Abraham visited us several times, and we signed the agreement in the 2017, and we, also from this country, you met many students join this project. But also the Egypt counselor was invited to visit IT and organized the meeting with the Egyptian com companies. Then we are trying to establish a center in the Egypt joint center. And the second project is we use cellulose for example, wood and store separated from this, and shrimp shell and walls to produce fibers. One of the features of the technology is the way using iron liquid as the solvent could dissolute the uh, cellulose, produce high quality fibers. This fiber could be used to make clothes 
and also develop the antibacterial materials. The third one is the waste plastic recycling. For example, the PET, this bottle for the, for the water store storage. So that we use the technology to try to solve it, dissolve it, split of the, the, this PET to monomer. Then this monomer recycled. This project we collaborate with the UK and now this project also be supported by the UK government and the Chinese government. Actually, this technology we also want to transfer to the developing countries, for example, Thailand. And actually, this contains many of the important technologies, for example, dissolving and spinning many long process. We imagine the Egypt student, Pakistan student joined this, this, this project. Furthermore, because the PT is from the petroleum, it is fossil and uh, materials. But if we can produce the FDC instead of the PTA from the biomass, then it will be a green way, a green way. So that this amount is very, very large. In the, in, in the world, it's almost 100 million tons of the P, P, PTA. So we are now developing the whole process from biomass to produce uh, former for, uh, uh, HMF, then produce the, uh, the, this, uh, this RC, then produce this polymer, this whole circle. I think the, it's, uh, and also this product have many unique properties, for example, preventing the oxygen. The second is the solar energy and CO2 utilization. The solar energy for one house, for one family, it could be developed in China or so demonstrated. Actually, this contains a lot of technology, for example, energy storage and so on. Also, we could use solar to generate electricity. Electricity could split water to produce the hydrogen. But the one of the key technologies we, we use iron liquid to increase the conductivity and try to save in the energy, produce, increase the efficiency. And also, if we can develop the technology, use nitrogen and water produce ammonia, or nitrogen, water, and CO2 to produce the urea, it will be great because for the ammonia synthesis, the current process is high temperature, high pressure, and produce a lot of the CO2. So we are now collaborating with Australia and a lot of the students from the developing countries is also working on this project. Furthermore, we use CO2 to produce the like EC and DMC, DPC further react with the SOSOBID or the this the bisphenol A could produce the bio-based PC. Now, this project already successfully demonstrated in China. This is the twenty thousand ton, and recently we developed a one hundred thousand ton plant. And furthermore, we use the electricity, develop the CO two reduction to reduce the acetic acid oxalic acid. If this technology is successful, and I think it will be very very useful. So the also many students from developing countries is joining in this, this project. The third one is fossil energy and minerals. Now, if we develop in the reduce, the, if we want to reduce the CO2 emission, we will try to use the petroleum to produce chemicals, not, not oil, not oil. So the important way to produce olive the olive directly from the petroleum, so that we have to obtain the chemicals larger than 70%. And from the olive could produce many, many of the 
highly and high value for product ducts. So this is the circular three, the fluid bed, uh, the, the reactors. This is a catalytic creating. The new technology could reduce of the CO2 emission half of the current oil process. Compared to the core route, which is much lower, only one case. So the, this technology, we are collaborated with PTTTC, including not only this reaction, but also separation of the uh, alkene and, 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 and similar compounds. And also we are collaborating with Sata Europa Amico and uh, through the Sinopec Center in the uh, Sata Europa. And Petro China is also trying to use this technology by collaboration with us. So the third, uh, another technology is we, the, for the copper, copper. The copper in the Myanmar is the largest copper mineral resource. And the largest one is by collaborating with IPE. In the 2018, we established the uh, plant so that could produce 5,000 ton per month. Now could produce 10,000 ton per month of the coppers. And also this project have a lot of the impact in the world and we increase the employment and also we exploring a new way to together training and together we securely cultivate the graduate students and also we also support the community and the people the collaborations. And further for the lithium, lithium is important for the battery. But the salt lake in China is very rich in Qinghai. And also the other countries, for example, Africa, Latin American countries, they also have a rich lithium containing the lake. We develop the technology by developing the new solvent, new extractant, and the new technology try to increase the purity and the efficiency to 99%. And the recovery could increase about 20 percent and reduce the energy consumption about 30 uh, percent. The fourth one is the anti pandemic uh, so, uh, materials. So, ironic liquid, I'm working on an ironic liquid, ironic liquid could be used to prevent and treatment of COVID 19. And also, we served an investigated the many of the ionic liquid and I found some of the liquid such as this one. This could penetrate the, of the, this shell and could interact directly with the S, S cell moleculars. Then this could cure the bacteria. So this should be very, very good. Probably could also use it for the vaccines. Another technology is for the atomization. Atomization is efficiently for the, especially for the anti-memory drug, especially for the Africa countries. This is from the this raw material we could extract it and we build a large plant. Then further we produce this atomization IU and OU. This infection gel, gel. This gel was was sent to many countries from China to Sweden, UK, Denmark, and then Nigeria and the Congo. And then we received a, a lot of the letters. They, they sent us our our support. Another one, Another one. Is the Kuri mask, COVID nineteen pandemic water. Yeah, that this technology that we through the phase change could make the cooling mask. Cooling mask then could reduce the temperature uh, about the three uh, or two degrees. The third part is the talent cultivation. We are happy increase over the 
foreign student, and also we host and uh, a lot of the seminar and training class, for example, the molecular simulation and uh, analyzed instrument. And also we host a lot of the meetings, inviting the students and professors to join this meeting uh, from the uh, belt and road countries. So for the summary, I recently we host a meeting uh, you asked the student in IP and in CAIS to discuss and survey the needs of the, their countries. And the future, I think we will more concern the green technology innovation and transfer by collaboration with the Belt Road countries. And we will accept of the technology transfer, we will think the how to contain the talent how could the students' academic exchange and also could uh, make some uh, the suggestions. We hope we can develop some low carbon technology demonstration zones and uh, could uh, develop a, a, a generally technology for the carbon neutralization. And the future, I think this finally, uh, Finally, could reach uh, a carbon neutrality by by the to the to the meetings at the I think 50 years this uh, level levels. So that we generally I think we have the only one of the hometown the earth. We should work together to develop in the green and the low carbon technology to reach the carbon neutrality. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor you. Na, for your presentation. And uh, your presentation highlights important technology that contribute to green society, better quality of life, and carbon neutrality as well. So I have one question for you. Yeah. In terms of international collaboration, you have shown that you have collaborated with many nations in transferring your technologies to countries with uh, more and more like biomass resources, uh, which technology you think is suitable for working with countries in Southeast Asia like Thailand and why? Because you have yeah, so many, yeah. can you recommend one or two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. A very good uh, question. Uh, I think for Thailand, now we have uh, actually several projects. Uh, generally, I think two will be important. One is the biomass. Biomass could make the biodegradable de plastic. Means we use some biomass, then with some of the material from the fossil uh, resource, then mix the, to make a biomass containing biodegradable plastic. In China, we have Jointly with the company developed a uh, 100 some ton of the plant. I hope this technology could be could be collaborated and uh, transferred to Thailand. Second one, I think, is the is the PTTD. We collaborate the PTTD for the efficiently use the petroleum because the separation technology. How to separate the olefin? Different olefin, for example, acylin and propylene and uh, acylin and uh, acyl. This separation technology now we are collaborate. And these two technologies we are now jointly working. Hope this could be applied in Thailand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It sounds really exciting. And we hope that we could have a chance to maybe connect you to our researchers very soon. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank, you thank you again, you. Professor Zhang, for your presentation and interesting uh, points that you make. Thank you. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you. So thank now you. I would like to move to speak second speaker, which is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Thamrong Rat Mungjeron. He is currently a Senior Advisor on Sustainable Development at National Science and Technology Development Agency, or NASDAQ.
and also the president of Asia Pacific Roundtable for Sustainable Consumption and Production Foundation, or APRSCP. On circular economy aspect, he is a member of National Subcommittee on Circular Economy under the Biocircular Green Economy Model, or BCG, and also the chairman of Circular Economy Subcommittee under Program Management Unit Competitiveness, or PMUC, Thailand. And his talk is titled, Circular Economy, a part of BCG Economy Model in Thailand. Please welcome Dr. Tamrong Ratta. Thank you, Dr. Lily. I would like to share my slide. Could not share. So I don't you... know why I can I cannot share my slide. Can can you show the slide that I gave it to you? Sure. Okay. Uh, wait. Please wait a moment, please. Something wrong. Okay. So we will share the slide for you, Professor Kamrongrat. Please wait a moment. Okay. Ajahn Tamrong Rat, are you still yes. with us? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. I haven't seen the slide yet. Hold on. Uh, we are trying to get the slide on the screen. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. During the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I will talk about the uh, overview of the circular economy in Thailand, which is part of the uh, bio circular and green economy. Next slide, please. Okay, so this slide, so this slide show, you know, the sustainable development uh, movement in, in Thailand context, where we use the sufficiency economy philosophy, uh, or called SEP, you know, uh, led by uh, His Majesty the King of Pumbumi Ponadundet, Rama, the Nai of Thailand. And uh, this is a, uh, the, you can see that uh, on the left hand side, we have the middle part, which is a three loop, you know, moderation, uh, responsiveness and cell immunities with the two conditions, you know, the knowledge condition and the integrity condition. And that the foundation that, you know, uh, Thailand used on the right hand side, the top, you can see that we have a 20 year national strategy from the year 2018 to 2037 that formed the Thailand 4.0 that, you know, go toward the prosperity, uh, security and sustainability. With that, you know, right now, uh, Thailand has the BCG economic model, which is the national agenda is the, uh, from the, this year, 2021 to 2027. Uh, under the BCG model, you know, we form all the vision from Thailand 4.0 concept of uh, sufficiency economy philosophy and also the uh, sustainable development goal, you know, of the UN uh, 17 goal with the side technology innovation, trying to build the new model economy for Thailand. And under the BCG, B is the bioeconomy, C is circular economy, and G is green economy. Now, today, I will focus on the circular economy. Next slide, please. 
Okay, under the BCG model, we you know work on the value creation. We focus on the four sector. The first one is food and agriculture. Second one is medical and wellness. The third one is energy material and biochemicals. And the last one is the tourism and creative economy. So we use this four sector because of Thailand has the uh, quite you know high biodiversity and also uh, cultural diversity. Uh, you can see that uh, the dotted line, the the red color here, you know, uh, we talk about the we use refurbished sharing, recycle, upcycle, maximum life cycle usage, and zero waste. All of this form the circular economy. And uh, when we talk about the economy, you know, uh, Thailand has a target to increase the GDP of the, this four sector from 3.4 trillion baht, which is account for 21% of GDP to 4.4 trillion baht. So that means about the 3% increase of the GDP. And also for the employment, we would like to, you know, with this uh, new model, we can increase the employment from 16.5 million to 20 million employment of Thailand. So that the economic, you know, and employment part for the resource and waste, you know, this economic model aim to reduce resource consumption to third of it, and also reduce waste by 16.5 million ton per year. So this is the uh, formation of the bio circular and green economy of Thailand. Next slide, please. Okay, I said that I will focus on the circular economy. Why? You know, uh, on the left hand side, you can see that, you know, we have a quite low resource efficiency, you know, during the past 10 years, you know, uh, the domestic material consumption. Uh, DMC, DMC is account that we calculate the biomass utilization, metal utilization, non-metal utilization, and also fossil fuel utilization per capita has been increasing, you know, and the resource efficiency is quite low. We produce only $1.3 per kilogram of the material. So this, we, I think that we can increase this. Also the waste problems, you know, we still have some problem with the waste. And we said that, you know, circular economy can, is a future economic value for Thailand. It's an opportunity to change the waste. We call it a secondary raw materials. So it's opportunity to have a, a platform and challenge business and to, you know, get more uh, economic <clears throat> on this. And it's also responding to the sustainable development goal, as I mentioned. On the right hand side, you can see that uh, some graph for ASEAN that, you know, the domestic material consumption or and also the material footprint per GDP is quite, you know, that quite high. That means we, we use is a quite high resource intensity comparing to, you know, some uh, developing con developed country. And the uh, bottom right it's a resource productivity. So most of ASEAN country, you know, including Thailand has quite low resource productivity. So that means we have quite a high opportunity, you know, to produce more economics from the, our resources. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, I, business and industry are quite active you know, on circular economy. On the left hand side, that, that the uh, big company, uh, Siam Cement Group, the PTTGC, which is which I just mentioned about that, uh, PTT Global Chemicals, you know, they are quite active. They use the model of circular economy. And the, the middle one is the set stock exchange of Thailand. They have quite a high number of industry uh, business that register with them. So they have a policy on circular economy. On the bottom, uh, Thailand PPP plastic, that the private, uh, public private people partnership together uh, is more than 36 organizations, you know, working on this, trying to reduce the plastic waste 
and increase more uh, economics, you know, for, for Thailand. On the right-hand side, the TBCSD is a Thailand Business Council for Sustainable Development. This is one of the uh, organizations under the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. They also bring together and work, you know, toward the uh, circular economy. On the right bottom, uh, this is the board of investment of Thailand. Now, the board of investment, the, the, uh, they have a policy on circular economy to promote this. That means, you know, for the uh, foreign company that would like to invest in Thailand and with the circular economy concept in that, we can have the coverage, you know, uh, for, uh, from the board of investment of Thailand. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is the white paper, you know, uh, circular economy roadmap of Thailand, which is, you know, produced from the Office of National Higher Education Science Research and Innovation Policy Office. On the left-hand side, you can see the framework of circular economy development of Thailand. So we start from reduce preserve and enhance the, you know, uh, the products and the materials. And the third one is minimize the systematic leakage and negative, you know, externality. So that uh, we will bring all the stakeholders together and work on this. And the right-hand side, that the uh, model of Thai circular economy from move from linear to the circular economy, we look for the new business opportunity, low carbon society and green job. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, as I mentioned to you that, you know, uh, we have a, a national agenda, you know, from 2021 to 2027. And we focus on three, at the beginning, we focus on the three sector which is the plastic and packaging, agriculture and food, and also building and construction. So this is the highlight of the circular economy in Thailand. Next slide, please. And this is the policy and target we form on three aspects. The first one we call circular economy champion. Second one is circular economy platform. Third one is circular economy research and development. And the third one is circular economy citizen. With all these three pillars, you know, we can move uh, Thailand forward you know, with the circular economy concept. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I just would like to mention about, you know, one aspect on the circular economy citizen. Uh, NSTDA working with all the partner, you know, together with the PPP Plastic and other, we have one project, you know, on the circular economy course uh, for uh, general education, which is the first year and second year university level. You know, we form the all, every stakeholder move together, all the three we, we call quadruple helix model. And we produce now the circular lifestyle for the 21st century. Now the course is finished and we, you know, give it to all the, uh, uh, university in Thailand to promote this. Next slide, please. Uh, now, I would like to focus on the research and development. Okay, in, I, I also uh, working with the uh, granting agency. So we have four pillars to give a grant, a research grant. One is to build the CE champion. Second one is to build CE platform. Third one is focus on the research development and innovation. And the fourth one is the in the bring factor, you know, to promote indicator baseline data, standard and policy on this. Next slide, please. I'll give you some example. This is the CE champion project. You know, this is focus on the plastic sector. You know, we have problems, we trying to find solution. And this is the model that we work together you know, with the uh, private sector, with the PPP plastic partnership, and trying to reduce uh, plastic, you know, and also have the digital platform with the circular, uh, with the certified sorting and trading hub. This will solve the problem with the inner 
uh, community in Thailand. Next slide, please. This is the uh, example of CE platform uh, focused on the material and construction sector. Uh, this project, you know, uh, focus on the uh, house, townhouse, you know, uh, commercial building, uh, bond, and also the kiosk. So we compare between the traditional uh, uh, construction with the modular construction. You can see that it's 30 to 50% faster, 60 to 90%, you know, prefab with the off-site assembly. Uh, On-site labor just use less than uh, the typical one and can reduce waste reduction by 52% and greenhouse gas reduction by 50% and also can save the you know, economic saving by 20%. So this is the benefit of the economics and also the environmental. <coughs> Next slide, please. So this is the example of the research development that we have done. This is the uh, sector on agriculture and food. You know, uh, Thailand has some problem. The pain point is we burn the sugarcane leaves 20, uh, 11 metric ton per year. That cost PM particle matter 2.5, high electricity cost, low income to the farmer, and also greenhouse gas emission. So with this machine, you know, it can solve this problem and can reduce PM 2.5 by 20,000 ton per machine per year, and also has the economic benefit. The internal rate of return of this machine is 25, 21.7%. Uh, Next slide, please. So with this, you know, you can see that, that the example of Thailand under the BCG economy, we also have some project with the uh, ASEAN, like, you know, SCP, uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production Framework for ASEAN. So this is ongoing project. We work with the UNEP, EU Switch Asia, and also Asia Pacific Roundtable on Sustainable Consumption and Production. Also, we have a circular economy for plastic in ASEAN. We have an ASEAN circular economy roadmap now is working. And also, Dr. Lily, you know, is the one that promote ASEAN BCG network. So with this, I think that, you know, we can have a better quality of life, better, you know, economic growth, but decoupling the natural resources use and environmental impact. So BCG model focusing on circular economy can work together. And I hope that we can collaborate with China and with other country, you know, in ASEAN, and also in the world also. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tamrong Rat, for your insightful information of circular economy perspective of Thailand. So uh, before we let you go for your first vaccination, thank you for you know, spending your time with us. Uh, I have one question for you. Uh, so the, what is the biggest challenge uh, apart from funding, you know, of research in the field of circular economy in Thailand? Uh, the, the biggest challenge, I think that, you know, uh, because uh, circular economy will be uh, successful, you know, if it's win-win-win situation. But normally, you know, when we have some project, then will be someone to lose something, you know. Uh, they they used to do it uh, linear. They have a, you know a benefit from that. When they change to the circular economy, they might lose something there, but it's still win. You know, when they lose that, it's still win win to to everyone in the community. So we have to talk to every stakeholder and bring it together. Uh, let them you know understand the concept and try to win it together. You know, without uh, so so I, I we focus on three sector at the beginning, and we will try to get it more uh, to other sector also. I hope that it kick off going now in Thailand, and with the ASEAN project, I believe that you know uh, we can work together. Sometimes circular economy we need a, a economy of scale. Sometimes country na national scale might not be enough. 
you know, when we talk about the plastic or something like that, sometimes we need the uh, bigger scale. So collaboration with ASEAN on BCG would help moving on circular economy also. So that that my my you know idea on this. Thank you so much. I think that's very encouraging and. Uh, I, I hope that we could uh, discuss further with other partners on this uh, circular economy issue in, you know, in everywhere, not just ASEAN, but also with China and with uh, Japan, Korea, and many countries. So thank you very much again, Dr. Thamrong Rat, for your great uh, presentation. Sawadee I have to leave now. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the vaccine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so our third speaker is Dr. Raslan Ahmad. Uh, he is a senior vice president of Malaysian Industry Governmental Group of High Technology or MITE, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation of Malaysia. He drives strategic initiative in the area of clean, green and renewable energy, sustainable cities and communities and industry 4.0. In addition, he pioneered the establishment of operationalization of Malaysian Innovation Foundation or MIF as new entity under MOSTI to champion grassroots innovation. His talk is titled Circular Economy and Green Agenda Towards Share Prosperity Vision 2030. Please welcome Dr. Ahmad. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lili. Uh... Uh, let me uh, share my presentation first. Allow me to do that. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you uh, for inviting us for this very important uh, forum. Um, I feel honored to have the opportunity to share what we are doing in Malaysia, especially uh, my organization called uh, Malaysian Industry Government Group for High Technology, or, or MIT. Uh, maybe uh, let me begin my presentation with a uh, short introduction about my organization because I believe not all of you familiar with our organization. Uh, can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can see it clearly. Okay, thanks. Um, my is an uh, entity uh, established by the government in 1993 as a think tank, uh, uh, specifically focused on high technology. Uh, we are government agency under Ministry of Science, Technology of, and Innovation, or MOSTI. Uh, um, we are considered uh, as an organization who promote partnership between government and also the industry in the area of high technology. Among our key strategic role include, uh, you know, providing strategy advisory to the government and industry in uh, selected uh, or national priority area. We also do some facilitation in terms of, uh, you know, to provide the bridge between the industry and the government uh, in terms of policy, uh, program, project, which uh, have a mutual interest between government and industry. We also manage uh, some uh, national and global project on behalf of our key stakeholder. So today I would like to take this opportunity to share uh, in terms of our contribution and our intervention in relation to circular and green economy. I think um, we, we, we have series of intervention uh, at the policy level, uh, mostly providing the strategic document for the government industry and the area in the area of circular and green economy. Um, we gather strategic input uh, from various stakeholders, from the government, from the industry, from the academia, 
to ensure uh, we have common goal. So I still uh, want to also mention about the importance of collaboration uh, between uh, the government, the industry, and the civil society in promoting circular economy and green uh, in our country. So one of our key uh, role in mind is uh, helping both the government and industry uh, producing a series of policy documents. Uh, if you uh, follow this uh, presentation, we have done so many uh, policy uh, document formalization in the area of, for example, in the area of uh, biomass, uh, green technology foresight, uh, solar, sustainable city, uh, sustainable energy program, port, uh, you know, uh, highway, and data center. Uh, we, since uh, 2013, I think uh, it's not new for us uh, when talk about circular economy or green uh, economy. Uh, one of the um, important uh, contribution of our organization in relation to uh, circular economy and green technology is uh, back to 2017, where we are helping the government of Malaysia uh, together with the uh, industry player to formulate what we call green technology foresight uh, 2013. This uh, document provides some guidelines to all the key stakeholders in Malaysia in terms of charting our agenda toward, uh, towards uh, 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 green and also circular economy. Uh, in this uh, foresight exercise, we are uh, focusing on uh, nine sectors, which is um, a waste, uh, agriculture, uh, ICT, transport, manufacturing, water, building, forestry, and energy. Uh, again, uh, this uh, document is not just a document, but the challenge uh, for most of us back to how we can uh, leverage on this uh, uh, sector to ensure we gain benefit from economic, social, and environmental point of view. So. Uh, uh, through this uh, foresight, uh, you know, document, we are able to share our thought, our uh, you know, direction in the ninth area we mentioned uh, in this uh, document. Uh, we also not able to deliver or you know, uh, champion the circular economy without collaborating with others. So I think, as you aware, there are so many platforms globally uh, where we can uh, work together. Uh, just give example uh, here we have i like think two platform first on platform for accelerating the circular economy pace which is established in 2017 to drive the initiative from public private sector for circular economy uh, another the reason one now we also be part of what uh, IS, iso tc 323 circular economy uh, champion by iso which is now currently in the mid to formulate the standard for circular economy to be to be adopted by global community. We are happy to be part of that. Uh, I myself uh, have participated with uh, uh, and involved in this committee, and then uh, we are at the middle of the uh, initiative together with other countries. So I think uh, participate in global uh, community in this area very crucial for Malaysia. I think back to uh, green technology in circular economy, we believe uh, we need to address the total value chain of the circular economy. Uh, and then we need to close the loop uh, from, the, from the manufacturing, distribution, usage, disposal, and recycle. I think uh, our experience uh, through the green technology foresight 2030, we view the adoption of green technology can complement the circular economy value chain via the introduction of specific technologies along the segment such as green manufacturing, green transport, production of green products, green waste technology, and green mining activities. Uh, I think uh, most of you aware there are so many key drivers towards circular economy. I just to highlight a few couple of drivers which is very uh, you know uh, motivating us in Malaysia to uh, uh, moving towards circular economy. Definitely first from economic and structural losses. 
Uh, second, from a uh, price volatility of uh, raw material, materials, materials, and then definitely demographic trend also force us to think about circular economy. Urbanization, I think more, more than 70% of our population now in the city instead of in rural. So there are a lot of issues uh, uh, from the urbanization uh, kind of effect. Then uh, definitely uh, acceptance of new business model also is very critical now when we talk about circular economy. And then uh, adopting uh, new technology and also managing the scarcity of natural resources equally important. Last or not least, we talk about innovation. Uh, again, I just want to refer back to our green tech for site 2030. Uh, I just want to zoom in uh, one of sector where we are now currently currently focused. For example, in the area of waste. Um, during our uh, consultation and um, prioritization, we get the at least in the Malaysia during this period of uh, exercise. We have gathered more than 40 green technology outlooks applicable in the waste segments such as uh, generation, storage, collection, transport, treatment, disposal, as well as, as a product and services. So the issue now, how we want to leverage uh, based on this technology, how we should adopt and deploy this uh, opportunity and ensure finally everybody uh, win uh, for their own agenda. So again, um, uh, in this picture, the reduction of waste material material can be optimized with the introduction of green technology and sustainable practices. I think uh, the issue now, how we can ensure all key stakeholders at the federal, state, uh, local government level, at the organization level, can adopt this technology and conduct the, the best practices. So in my we're not just talking about uh, in, involved in policy and uh, you know document, but we also need to also dirty our hand to involve in some of the real project in the ground. So let me highlight uh, a few example. Currently, we are working with with other partner. For example, uh, under one of the project, uh, you know, together with our global partner, where we participate in what they call. Global Clean Tech Innovation Program. I think Thailand also be part of this uh, program. Uh, we are the country uh, with UNIDO, where this be funded under Global Environmental Facility Number Four, uh, which under this program uh, uh, in Malaysia we are able to identify 50 entrepreneur uh, to nurture in the area of clean technology. So uh, one of the example of uh, entrepreneur or industry, small scale industry, have been nurtured through our program. They, uh, the company called Free the Seed, uh, where this uh, company uh, able to produce, you know, uh, bio uh, degradable products, uh, especially in terms of uh, converting into uh, bio degradable packaging from the paddy straw. And those addressing the open burning activity by the farmers, and then uh, uh, from this uh, project, they have able to secure market in Europe uh, to supply the bio uh, gradable product packaging uh, uh, for for the global uh, market. So uh, uh, we are so great and happy. Uh, we able to nurture uh, you know, a local a small company, uh, uh, you know, promoting. Uh, biodegradable packaging product through the technology we, we are working closely with them. Uh, another example in the waste uh, composting machine, we are also able to produce or nurture another small company called Myco. Uh, again, this is a startup company uh, at the early stage, but through their capability and technology, they are able to process the food waste for the you know, garden and plantation compost composting uh, material material. So as you were in Malaysia, we have so many uh, you know uh, agriculture waste. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, through this kind of project, we also can you know facilitate and promote uh, converting of waste. Especially in Malaysia, you know we we, we are bigger uh, producer of uh, palm oil uh, waste. So right now we are promoting and looking for program partner to you know converting uh, palm waste into you know uh, fertilizer or new source of energy 
And this is a new area where we look forward to have partnership with our partner uh, at regional and also at the global level. So we welcome any interest uh, from our partner out there. So not only that, um, based on this uh, also, we also helping the local government addressing their waste management. For example, uh, in one of the local government area, we are helping them to formulate what we call development waste eco park, uh, which is uh, addressing industry waste uh, together with industry player, uh, which is Severo and Epic. Uh, now, not only that, uh, the challenge now how to uh, upscale and replicate uh, those, uh, you know, example, not just in uh, uh, fuse location, but to bring to entire uh, Malaysia, especially in the peninsula and also in the uh, Malaysia in, in this particular context. I'm happy to inform uh, the audience, the participant and uh, fellow speaker. Right now, Mike as a, you know, a think tank and also the bridge between uh, government industry uh, in the mid to facilitate uh, green and circular economy throughout of Malaysia together with a couple of state uh, in Malaysia, Northern, West and East. For example, uh, in Northern Peninsula Malaysia, we are now helping uh, Penang State in the area of waste uh, technology outlook uh, in terms of looking what are the best technology solution to address waste in Penang, for example. Similar thing uh, in Perak, uh, uh, which is uh, the border of uh, you know uh, Penang and Kedah, uh, we are now helping the uh, state of Perak to formulate what they call uh, Green Print 2025, uh, which is their interest focus more on a uh, couple of uh, you know uh, sector, for example, smart and uh, sustainable city, uh, you know, and then uh, on bio uh, gradable packaging, uh, food security, uh, biodiversity and environment, and waste treatment. This is just example of area where we will welcome, welcome any partner collaborator out there to work with us, not just. Uh, uh, you know, uh, do the project at the federal level, but also at the state and local local government level. Uh, in the area of Selangor, which is uh, not far away from uh, our capital, capital city of Kuala Lumpur, uh, we also now are helping and facilitating how, uh, uh, you know, uh, issue of waste, issue of uh, smart mobility and um, uh, on smart uh, energy uh, can be deployed, can be realized. Uh, again, uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, facilitate and ensure the small uh, collaboration between federal, state and local government uh, in terms of addressing common and mutual uh, interests. Uh, in conclusion, I think uh, uh, everybody acknowledged the importance of circular economy, the importance of um, you know, green technology, to you know, uh, drive or to you know, uh, to to become the catalytic for uh, you know, ensure we achieve achieve our circular economy goal and uh, vision. And then, uh, in in our context in Malaysia, um, definitely uh, we still uh, at the early stage in at the formulating national level policy framework. Uh, we might learn from uh, Thailand just now because I, I get excited when I follow the presentation by my old, uh, former uh, previous uh, colleague. Then definitely we need to see how during the mid post event, uh, Dr. Lili, how we can work together uh, at the regional and also at the country by uh, either G2G or through ASEAN or whatsoever. I think I will end here. I agree with everybody. Uh, the only way uh, and moving forward is through collaboration and partnership. Uh, once again, on behalf of my and uh, my colleague from uh, Malaysia, we would we would like to thank uh, the organizer and and everybody. Thanks. Uh, over to you, Dr. Lily. Thank you so much, Dr. Raslan, for your informative information, especially on the business opportunities in the areas of circular economy. So, if we would like to have your suggestion on what are the few first steps that the country have to take if they would like to transform themselves toward the circular economy. Could you maybe give, you know, one or two uh, suggestions? 
First, I think uh, we need to identify the priority issues and the challenge and also the opportunity. Not just issue, but also the opportunity. Uh, we need to address both. Otherwise, we are always, uh, you know, thinking about problems and challenges. But I also want to stress the importance for the country to look for the opportunity based on their strength. That's one. Second, definitely, as I mentioned earlier, we require public-private partnership approach. I, I don't think government alone can, de can deliver and um, mobilize the entire resources in our country. We need the participation from the industry. We need the participation from the academia and the civil society and our global and regional partner. I think that's the two things. Uh, doesn't matter who are we, we need to you know, uh, have that particular two elements I mentioned earlier. Great, great answer. Thank you. I think uh, in the end, it comes down to like the collaboration between all sectors, including government, business, and international partners. So thank you again, Dr. Raslan, for your very uh, encouraging and very inspiring presentation. And uh, thank you for your answer as well. Thank you. Uh, so next, uh, for sustainable development, it is important to learn from the nature. So our next speaker, Dr. Saito Osamu, who is a principal policy researcher at Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, Japan, uh, and who is also the expert in the field of biodiversity and ecosystem services. He has been working on the interlinkage between ecological, human, and social systems through sustainability science approaches. He has also been actively promoting various activities for intergovernmental platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services as a lead author of both regional and global assessments. Today, he will give a talk on future scenarios and nature-based solutions towards green and sustainable society. Mr. Dr. Saito, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see? Yes, we can. My, okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer inviting me this important uh, the forum. Uh, Dr. Saito, uh, would, would you as uh, Dr. Oh, Lee introduced, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Saito, sorry. Would it be possible to have your slide on full, full yes. screen mode, please? Thank you. Uh, How about this? Still not full screen? Um, not Is that yet. full screen? Not yet. Hmm. Could could you try turn the? Oh, okay, that it it works now. Thank you. Please go on. Is it okay? It is. Uh no, hold on. It. It's it's, it's not in. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Uh, on my computer is not full screen yet. Uh, have so have you already tried the full screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Um. um okay. It's not, uh, <laughs> well, our technical team say that maybe you have to try turn it off again and turn, you know, close this file again and then turn on the, the file again. Okay.
please. Okay. How about now? Uh, not yet. Please, please wait a little bit. Maybe it delayed. So, Doctor Doctor Saito, can you still hear me, Doctor yes. Saito? Yes. Okay, okay, I can hear you, uh, but we don't see your slide yet. Mm -hmm. mm. How about now? I think it's because of the internet signal. Yes, it, we can see your slide. I think it's okay if it's... Oh, okay, it's full screen now. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sorry continue. for taking, t taking time. So uh, let me start by uh, giving you the just kind of background of the international... Uh, the science policy communities relating to the uh, not only the uh, the circular economy so I think circular economy is uh, has been discussed uh, many different you know uh, science communities but uh, mostly I think that the international resource panel UN UNEP uh, has been uh, initiating is the most relevant international body for the circular economy. But when it comes to the climate change, as you know, the IPCC has been working on right now the, the fifth uh, the assessment report will be uh, next year, but then this year and other year. And also the, uh, as uh, the Dr. Lili mentioned that I've been working on the uh, intergovernmental platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services, IPBES, uh, since 2012, and uh, IPES has been publishing series of the assessment reports, including the uh, global assessment reports and uh, uh, some of the regional and the uh, thematic assessment. And IRP, the International Resource Panel, also uh, developed the, the global resource outlook, and which has uh, uh, provided the total sustainability scenario. And according to that, they are uh, emphasizing in order to uh, keep the the climate change uh, target, uh, namely is 1.5 degree or lower, then the historical trend cannot meet that you know uh, target. So that the further resource in improving the resource efficiency further, and also the the extending the effort to capture the food, land, uh, also the life on land and water. So other SDGs should be also considered, especially the, uh, in order to ensure the improved resource efficiency, you also need to consider uh, some of the trade-off between food, land, and uh, biodiversity and the water issues. So these has been captured, but how to uh, materialize is, uh, is uh, also the great challenge for our uh, international science community. And uh, when it comes to the future scenarios, uh, so the IPC also used different future scenarios like a representative concentration, uh, RCP uh, pathways, and also the SSP is a shared socioeconomic pathways has been used by the IPCC. At the same time, the IPES also uh, trying to uh, use this, has been using the scenario analysis approach. And scenario and modeling is quite important uh, the tools to uh, design or to, to set agenda setting and also the design the new policy 
when it comes to the implementation stage, uh, this scenario and models played very important roles. And also it can be used reviewing the previous uh, the policies. So the, uh, this cycle, the policy, or entire policy cycle, the scenario and model can play a very important role. And then the uh, recent uh, the nature-based solution, the term of nature-based solutions has been uh, widely used uh, by both uh, the IPCC communities and also the uh, IPBES communities. And then uh, I think that this nature-based solution has also the has very great potential to materialize green green technology and also the circular economy. So uh, as a definition, it has been uh, defined the actions to protect, sustainably manage and restore natural and modified ecosystem that are the social challenges, very social challenges, including the, uh, the circular economy to contribute simultaneously providing human well-being and biodiversity benefits. And then these are uh, uh, the, the the principles has been uh, the proposed, including integrated manner with other solutions, site specific and the culture context are important, and also the uh, maintain biological and cultural diversity. So the, not only the biological diversity and the cultural diversity has been also emphasized when when it comes to implement nature based solutions. And then also the other uh, seven principle the, the trade off between the production uh, economic benefit and the future options should be uh, the trade off between those should be avoided when, when we implement nature based solutions. So, uh, how we can really materialize this kind of the new concept of the scenario and nature based solutions. So, and also that this nature the solution has been categorized like this, Ecos ecosystem restoration approach, issue specific ecosystem related approaches, infrastructure uh, related approach. So the green technology, green infrastructure, uh, nature-based infrastructure, these are also part of the, the infrastructure related approach. And the ecosystem based management approach uh, include the integrated coastal zone management or integrated water resource management. Ecosystem protection, kind of, you know, area-based conservation. So putting the uh, protected area or natural park or nature park has been already uh, implemented by many uh, international or the government, international body and governments. So in order to uh, materialize the idea of the, the future scenario analysis and also nature-based solutions, uh, the, in Japan, the, we uh, administered uh, this six-year, five-year project uh, funded by the Ministry of Environment in Japan. And this project has been uh, led by Professor Takeuchi, the president of the IGES, where I'm belonging. Um, so, and then with participation of uh, more than 100 researchers uh, in Japan, the objective is to develop an integrated assessment model of social ecological systems to predict and assess natural and ecosystem social economic values of natural capital and ecosystem services under the different future scenarios, both in terrestrial and marine ecosystems. Uh, and then also the uh, we also discuss investigate the designing of the multi-level governance of the natural capital by using the new indicator, which is called inclusive well-beings. I'm not going not going to detail of this outcome of the project. I will pick up some of the relevant uh, research uh, output from this uh, very large project in Japan. Uh, we worked on the uh, national-wide, as well as uh, we worked on the three <clears throat> major case study site in, in Hokkaido and uh, uh, this uh, peninsula, North, North Peninsula and the South Island and Okinawa Islands. And we emphasized, uh, we took the approach to participate in scenario de code design and collaboration with local government and policymakers and pro practitioners uh, to promote multi-level governance of capital. 
Uh, this is uh, uh, the kind of overall structure of this uh, the Pansys, uh integrated model. So starting from the designing the future scenarios, uh, I will tell more about these future scenarios and then that these future scenarios ha uh, is, a, is a kind of narrative and the storyline of the four different scenarios has been have been the, uh, translated into the population distribution and land use uh, the composition. And then it will uh, provide you to the, uh, the terrestrial ecosystem service assessment team and also the money ecosystem service assessment team and uh, uh, different type of the, uh, the ecosystem services, including the uh, rice, vegetable, timber, fruits, uh, in terms of regulating services, the carbon sedimentation, pollination. And then when it comes to the cultural services, we assess the climbing, camping, uh, environmental education, uh, these uh, are also considered. And uh, both uh, the interaction between terrestrial ecosystem services and the marine ecosystem services also uh, also uh, investigated through the using the some of the key indicators such as the nutrient and sediment sediments and the indicator species. And these results also translated into the social economic bodies. So monetary terms, it it has been translated. And then it also finally it has been uh, translated into the inclusive world being index. And then uh, when we design the different future scenarios, we consider different uh, uh, policy options uh, indicated uh, in the below of this diagram. And then uh, this is uh, the four future scenarios we developed in Japan. Uh, we use uh, two different axes. So vertical axis is either we use more the natural capital versus uh, the we use more the producer capital. And the horizontal axis represent the, the population distribution. So we prefer the living in the urban area or the we remain living in the rural area. And then uh, in terms of the, uh, the circular economy, I think that the red highlighted part, like a green infrastructure, system-based disaster risk reduction, renewable energy, utilizing more renewable energy will be allocated uh, closer to the using more natural capital versus using the, the ICT, AI, and other imported goods and services as uh, allocated as uh, more close to the uh, produced capital basis. So by using these four scenarios, uh, we analyze, uh, we also, using these narratives, we translated this into the population uh, distribution as well as the land use uh, distribution uh, with 100 meter uh, resolution by using both population model and the land use model. Uh, this is uh, the result of the, uh, the land use changes uh, under the four different scenarios. Uh, we put this the business as usual in, in the middle. And you see that uh, there is uh, the difference between the, uh, the depending on the scenarios, the land use compositions uh, are slightly different. So this, this basic information uh, at the national level has been used to design uh, the local scale as well as the national scale, the strategies, uh, including the, uh, the the circular economy, designing circular economy and biodiversity strategies. This is a summary of the, the, the uh, land use change and population change. I will not go into detail about this. And at the same time, as a part of this project, uh, we investigated uh, uh, the, how the installation with the solar PV, solar power panel, affect mega, especially the mega solar power has been installed for the last uh, 10 years in Japan uh, by using the, the policy incentive. So then in order to increase the, the renewable energy, the, the, the Japanese government uh, introduced the feeding tariff policy so that uh, the, to make the uh, renewable energy is more proficial, uh, beneficial. But as a result, uh, we found that uh, many, the, the forest has been converted to uh, or the mega solar power PV plants. And it, it depends on the different, uh, depending on the, the region, 
but it, but in the, in the entire K, entire Japan, we found about 30% of the total area has been converted from forest to the mega solar power plants. So this is a, this kind of trade off should be uh, monitored and then uh, it should be avoided in under the name of the circular economy or decarbonization for the climate change mitigation. But uh, uh, we need to uh, consider that this kind with of a uh, significant loss of the forest and biodiversity. Uh, also, the, uh, in addition to the uh, national policy of the, the renewable energy expansion, we are facing the serious uh, depopulation, population decrease and aging, and which has been also the, uh, I think, the start in, in China too, and also the other Asian countries. But in Japan, the, the depopulation population decline has been started after uh, 2005. And then uh, we are expecting to lose about uh, more than 20% of the population uh, in, in 20 years. And uh, it caused uh, the, also the labor shortage in the forest sector and the agriculture sector. As a result, we find many uh, abundant forests and abundant farmland. And then these are uh, sometimes converted to the renewable energy power plants. Uh, and then it may affect uh, uh, the, the, this kind of the biodiversity of the trees and the habitat for the seeds in the area. So also we investigate, we, through using the model, uh, we set the 64 scenarios, we run the simulation models, uh, the, using a different abundant level of the pasture land in Hokkaido, in the Northern Island. And by using these four indicators, we found that the introduction of the uh, mega solar, so more, if we have the more, expand more renewable energy, so if we increase the renewable energy supply, we may sacrifice uh, some of the, uh, the, the endangered species habitat, and also we may lose the tree diversity. So there is a clear uh, the, uh, the trade off between the renewable energy expansion supply and biodiversity loss. So we need to also consider this kind of trade off when we materialize or realize the circular economy and also the realize green technologies. These results are the all uh, summarized in the four or uh, five policy briefs and one uh, synthesis summary for policy makers, and it can be uh, downloadable from the website of the our project. And this result has been already uh, provided to the Japan uh, Biodiversity and Ecosystem Service Outlook 3, and also the next uh, Japan's National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. So this is my final slide. So the decoupling national resource use and environmental impact from the economy activity and human well-being is an essential element for transition to the same future. And the second one is scenario model can play uh, the very important powerful means of transforming society through nature-based solutions. And population distribution pattern, the utilization of natural capital were identified two major drivers of the two uh for seeing the the future society which is uh toward sustainable future and trade-off between the resource use climate change mitigation and ecosystem conservation are the concern in promoting circular economy and nature-based solutions so thank you for your attention and give it, thank you very much for giving these important opportunities I'll give it forward to uh dr Lili. Thank you very much, Dr. Saito, for sharing your view on the interlinkage between biodiversity policy and social issues. This certainly reminds us to consider all aspects when it comes to the sustainable development. So uh, I don't know if this is actually different from what you are what you're mentioned right now, but uh, because you mentioned about the, the policy of natural resources and uh, biodiversity, but also Japan has promoted what we call the green growth strategy, which might be also in line with Thailand BCG. So could you maybe uh, elaborate on that uh, green growth strategy and together with, you know, how it goes with these uh, policies that you are mentioning? Uh, 
right now? Is it like um, goes well to, to, or it actually, um, yeah. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's it. this is a very important point. And, uh, when it comes to green economy, uh, the the government has been you know thinking they are overemphasizing the the climate change mitigation and also introduction of the green technologies. So the economy side and the climate climate side and the resource efficiency has been uh, overemphasized, and then they do not you know fully integrate the uh, biodiversity issues. So the, uh, now the government has been also the preparing the new uh, national strategy for uh, of the uh, biodiversity and action plan, and also the, they are also contributing to the try to lead, take a lead for the uh, post uh, biodiversity uh, the strategies and targets. So IG biodiversity target expired the last year. Now the uh, the China is hosting the the. CBD, uh, Convention by the Biological Diversity, CBDs, uh, COP15 in China, Kunming, and then uh, in, in this October. So that now that uh, the green economy concept would be a more uh, uh, expanded to capture such kind of trade-off between the climate change mitigation and the green economy and the uh, biodiversity issues. So that's my understanding, but still, I think there is still the gap between the green economy and the biodiversity strategy. Thank you so much. I think we could learn from you as well that you know we have to balance between the two issues. I think we have questions from the audience as well. Uh, let let me pull that up from the. Uh, okay. Um, I think the there is questions from Myanmar saying that. Uh, she would like to know more deeply about the two major drivers concerning socio-economic development in the last slide. So I'm not sure if uh, you could share your view on that. Do you understand my questions? I think she would like to know more on the major drivers concerning socio-economic development. Dr. Saito. Concern. Okay. Yeah. Of course. So, major concern is that the population. You know, uh, demographic change will be also the one of the key challenge we are facing. The aging and also the population decrease. Uh, it already started in, in in other Asian countries, and it may also cause you know uh, abundant farmland, abundant forest. So these are the actually the very prominent. Uh, very uh, challenging uh, in Japan, but that similar problem will be also the, uh, becoming prominent in other Asian countries, uh, I guess. So that kind of you know, demographic change as well as uh, because this affects economic activities and the urbanization too. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saito, for uh, your real answer. So I think that's all we have time for. And thank you again, Dr. Saito, for your presentation and your your answer. Thank you next, very much. Our for last this speaker for thank you. Thank you very much. So next, our last speaker for this session is Professor Sho Nam Jun. Uh, currently, he's an MRS Singapore Chair Professor. School of Material Science and Engineering, Nanyang Technology University. So Professor Cho has pioneered a novel approach to liver tissue engineering that has enabled and improved artificial organ system for studying liver diseases. In addition to his academic duties, Professor Cho is the founder of Involution Zero, a global nonprofit organization committed to building a green digital world for future generations by eradicate, eradicating pollution, which is information and pollution from the digital world. His talk is on From Hard Pollen to Soft Matter, a new perspective on sustainable materials innovation from natural resources. Please welcome Professor Cho Nam Jun. Hi, how are you everyone? Hello. Can you see my screen? 
Yes, we can I... see your screen, but if it's possible, can you make it larger? Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Can you see Please it? continue. Can you... Yes, we can see. All right. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, honored to be invited by this uh, fantastic uh, strategy plan and then this talk. It's basically I uh, uh, was invited by National Congress of Korea. And then, you know, they have a very, very certain question about how we actually solve the problem with the current, you know, agriculture fields. But in broadly, what is the definition of a green technology and sustainability come up with it together? So, you know, we did a, a small study group. I met uh, various of uh, government body, and then this paper is going to be come out very soon cross-dimensional technology with AgTech Pioneer. So this is whole new concept. You never heard about it. And then I'm gonna, next 20 minutes or 25 minutes, I'm gonna give you the brief introduction of this whole concept that is for, not only for the uh, innovation of uh, agriculture field, uh, but also for the new definition of uh, uh, sustainability. So, Contents is basically go from the uh, reality of agriculture and six industrialization, and then what is the innovation? And you know, I believe we have to reinterpreting what is the sustainability. Many speakers just talk about green technology. You know, one of the example you very well known as uh, electric car, solar cell power and wind turbine and so on. But in engineering viewpoint, whether those technology is sustainable or not is very much questionable. So I'll give you a new whole concept of uh, starting from the uh, expert of uh, material science and engineering. What is the material actually is and the, what is the innovation is happening from? So if you see the whole map in here, actually, Core innovation is come with the material innovation. And indeed, actually, the, the first material innovation is happened was actually very long time in China. That was a developed on the paper. After that, the technology developed with the industrial revolution and Renaissance revolution. There is a lot of technology developed by the US and UK. And then now, the, after the biological revolution, there is a new material will be come out soon. And then that's what I want to uh, introduce. And then let's just think about the, what is the problem right now, food security, and then in the sustainable fashion. And then you clearly see that we have to actually have a food security. It's a very important matter because after the COVID-19 pandemic, you realize that if the whole, the system, it's not working then you know some portion of the world that have a very big problem so in order to solve that you know people especially you and they're focused on the out of 17 sustainable development goal the out of four going to be you know no poverty zero hunger and then decent work for all and responsible consumption production pattern and so on so this is the un SDG sustainable development goal for the food and agriculture, but what is the problem with the uh, current situation? Current situation is basically global population trend is matter. If you actually see the statistic from the 95 to you know 2017 and 1960 to 2019 for agricultural industry and rural population, it's very clearly showing that the England industry is basically collapsing not only in in some of the asian country but it's uh, many of the world it's the same problem because the population getting old and the uh, agriculture is not a popular industry for that and however the world population is uh, uh, continuously increasing and aged population is also continuously increased so the gap between those population in aging is gap is humongous and this is not only problem in, in some of the country, but this is, uh, or could be the every country's problem, declining proportion of agriculture continuously with the ages. So why, why the rural area is declining? 
what is the problem because decreasing of the ruler income is happening and also ruler income for the agriculture growth is they have a huge gap so everybody want to stay in beijing or, or tokyo or seoul instead of those ruler countries so that was the concept for the sixth industrialization. This is basically agricultural innovation, economic growth, previous effort. It was happening then one guy, doctor uh, in a uh, Namaomi was the uh, make this concept. The concept is very simple. Hey, why don't you combine it or either multiply or plus adding together for the first industry, second industry, third industry. So that we popularize this agriculture or ecosystem or sustainable way we need to support agriculture, which was you know half successful. Because there is a lot of those cases, like for example, Napa Valley, Food Valley, there is a successful story, including the Netherlands Food Valley. However, however, those system. It's a very hard to adapt in, in the Northeast Asia or in the Southeast Asia. And then even Netherlands. Yeah, those whole city with the gigantic company is fine. They're doing good. But if you're just talking about the farmer income, they fluctuating dramatically. So this is not the sustainable solution for that. So how we solve this problem is not stable. So we need to really reinterpreting the sustainability. That is the, the whole, 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 whole thing about this talk. And then what is the new concept? So let's think about, the, and then I made the name for the ag tech pioneer and then cross-dimensional technology. So, you know, definition is basically the talent who look for the agricultural product with engineering scientific insight and dramatically enhance the adding value for the creating new material and problem. And also cross-dimensional technology is the one engineering processing can create the new material from discarded or surplus product, creating value addition through the technology fusion. So this is two definition, and then I'm gonna explain what is one by one. And then indeed it is true that 30% of the world agriculture output is wasted. That is about 60 million tons annually because we uh, we do not have a technology we using those surplus or those waste. So what is the sustainable eco agriculture ecosystem? It's basically following this diagram. So basically, if you actually see that whole development industrialization is going from either parallel or perpendicular. First industry production, second industry manufacturing, third industry service. However, other field, for example, IT or other area, they develop basically in the perpendicular fashion, no, in the cross-dimensional fashion. So basically, if you have a product, you can have uh, R&D innovation to adding value dramatically than we this material, you can actually create the bio-industry material. That is my definition of cross-dimensional industry technology, which I'm going to give you an example from now on, and then which is uh, you have a very familiar with. Everybody crazy about semiconductor right now, the uh, chips. Where are these chips from? I mean, we're using it everyday life. Your computer, right now we are connecting with the internet, Internet of thing is happening because we have this semiconductor industry, right? The chip. But what is the foundation in order to have that? We need to have a silicon vapor. Where this silicon vapor is from? Actually, the silicon vapor, the bars of silicon vapor is coming from natural source, which is quartz. Seven years ago, Synthesis of single crystalline silicon vapor from sand, which is quartz. That led to complete transformation of this whole electric field. And then today, we have the same issue. We have an outstanding issue to develop new class of material that harden natural potential for social good, which we have to have eco-friendly footprint, 
sustainable production and have a radically new function. I'm going to give you from now on few example what I meant by. And then the big question is how can we actually repurpose? Repurpose people think it's a waste right now. And Poland, everybody talking about Poland and then a lot of people thinking about hey allergy reaction, it is a waste or it is even pollution. Two, new innovative material innovation. And then what is the Poland? I mean, it's uh, uh, from the sunflower, from other material. I'm not going to go into the detail in the science, but people think Poland is the very, very interesting material. And that it is abandoned and then you're not using it. You're just waste. Right? And then with that, if you actually take a look at this resource, it is a very much abandoned. And then they have a high, high quality is available. We just not now using it. So what we create is basically, hey, instead of this not sustainable process from the wood or other source to make the plastic foam and paper, which is the humongously complicated process, this is apply same thing to the solar cell panel. Okay, solar cell panel, yes, they give you clean energy, but in order to make those panels, they have a rigorous chemical processing to basically down or hurt the environment. But if we can have an engineering input to process, very simple way to produce sponge, plastic, and so on, then it's going to be very much sustainable. This is a very important engineering mapping for the ash chart. You can clearly see that even I give you demonstrate even one single material as a pollen, as a waste, but you can actually create paper, sponges, hydrogel, microgel, even plastic using one material. That's why you need the cross cut material innovation. And then those material have a tremendous advantage of compared with conventional plastic, cellulose, chitosan, and so on. And then we call this is a sporo material. And then this can apply to many different industries. For example, very if you selling very as a whole product, it's about cost of $1.5 per kilogram. Yes, you can processing it, make the drink, a little bit of a cost, right? You can earn a little bit more and so on. However, if you actually adding the technology in here and then there is a lot of leftover too, you are able to basically extract, for example, beta glucan, which is a very, very necessary atmosphere, and then you clearly adding the uh, value for the whole processing. This is uh, happen to be possible because you have a technology or you input technology for that. This kind of system can apply various fields, including mushroom, and then also including the fishery, and then also including the uh, poultry and so on. This is the example for the egg. Right now, a lot of people crazy about the vaccine, right? This is the material who basically encapsulates the vaccine within the lipid nanoparticle. That one of the sources is uh, uh, simply natural source. And then all the first three, and then I give you example for the pollen-based research because this is one of the very innovative research, and then we are leading to. So this is the basically summary of cross-dimensional industrialization or technology applied in the system. You basically simply using wasted or abandoned abandoned material, you can actually give a the clear value addition into the system. And then in order to do that, we need the cross-dimensional innovation ecosystem, have to have a vision, strategy, and tactic. 
that starts from the talent, the recruitment. That's why we, I call this is agri-tech pioneer. We need to grow up, not only the sector for the engineering and science, but sector for the uh, agriculture that is necessary for recruit talent. And then you need to education, put the infrastructure partnership together with a certain market that give you the agricultural innovation system for the sustainability, the pollen as a material that is one of the example system, which right now in Korea, I'm advising the government. And then this is the whole mapping of the area. They are uh, past the rule for the prettiest area. As a, it's not small area, it's humongous, not big. But put the whole system, they have a whole prototype, how we can actually put this uh, new, Cross technology uh, dimensional city within the reaching the smart city concept. It's different from smart city because every single smart city people just build the infrastructure. Uh, they put the automobile line, they put the drone, they put the smart farm, and they put the smart lightning and so on. That is technology. But without industry, there is nothing is happening because nobody want to move in those city, even though you built those cities. So this whole today talks, the concept is in those sustainable way, if you want to develop, you need a new idea and then you need a new rule. And then in here, the Pyeongchang, which is the winter Olympic place in Seoul, and then they are pre effort and then almost finish up and then we have a whole plan right now and then the pilot study going to be happen from the uh from the august and december or oh, that's why i'm visiting right now korea helping them out make the plan so this is my last slide and then i love this spot for the uh da Vinci's. We have been impressed with the urgency of doing. And then knowing is not enough. We must apply, but willing is not enough. We must do. Okay. And a lot of people I heard today's talk, people talk about green technology, talking about sustainability. But now we need to revisit what is the green technology and what is the sustainability okay every single one especially the government officer government strategist or even the professor they talk about sustainability environmental sustainability but you need to really think about it because i give you an example for the solar panel or solar power and then I often ask myself, is it solar panel power is sustainable? Because we are not talking about just produce the clean electricity. In order to produce the clean electricity from the solar panel, you need to make the solar panel itself from the environment. That create, if you calculate the energy consumption environment harder than everything, that creates tremendous of impact for the sustainability. The, the concept in here I introduced today is basically we need a new concept of a technology, which I define in here as a cross-dimensional technology. And we need to actually employ for the uh, new way of the system so that we can have a uh, uh, better environment system for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Cho, for shedding some light on the direction of sustainable materials and many, many more. So uh, actually, I, I just noticed as well that we have uh, Ansel Secretariat uh, joining us from the beginning, I think, and uh, Professor Shao is already here. So I'm not sure if you have questions, but I will go to the question from the audience first. And then if you have questions, 
please prepare to ask the speakers as well. Um, actually, we have one question from the, the audience asking about how to make effective collaboration among the countries to accelerate implementation of green energy worldwide. So maybe that's timely for, for Professor Shaw to help us answer that. Are you, this is question is for me? Yes, please. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, for the collaboration. Uh, okay. In green technology, yeah. Okay, very good. So, you know, this is an excellent question. The question is, you know, as a country, how are we going to do the collaboration in order to have uh, uh, employed this for green technology or help people? Okay, I'm basically as a professor, I'm doing the infectious disease and then I, I'm very well aware right now the current situation. The thing is, one country doing great, that does not help. As a global, we have to do it together. Look at the situation right now. Mm. Okay, we yeah, cannot yeah. even travel. Even though yeah. the, the Singapore doing great, but mm -hmm. they cannot travel to US. Even though US doing great, they cannot travel to Singapore. Even though China doing great, we cannot go to China because we need to balance out. We need to really help each other. This is the global problem. Population, environment, sustainability. Even though pollution happen in one country that affecting whole global. So the solution is we need to really rethink what is the green technology even mean and the, what is the sustainability. If you actually see it globally, there is a lot of uh, waste. And then there is the technology we can develop and then we are developing we saw this is a waste, but we can actually utilize it as a great material, very innovative material. That's why the science and technology development with the policy is a very, very important. And then I give you an example today, the very simple example with the pollen. And then a lot of people think, ah, pollen is allergic material. But now, no. Pollen is a very useful material after this research coming out. And then a lot of a big company are looking for adapting this very natural material. So I believe this kind of a collaboration for underdeveloped country, also developed country, sharing the resource and working together, I believe is a very important in order to help for global green. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Professor Shaw, for a very good answer. Um, I'm not sure if Professor Shao and Professor Lee Kuhn would like to add anything more to to this, uh, to this uh, maybe not just this speaker, but all the speakers in this forum. You know, I just want to quickly cut, cut him. Thank you for Lily, you know. Uh, for ask me to make a, a little bit of comment. I think uh, that is a wonderful talk. Of course, I also enjoyed the in the presentations previously about this. You know, uh, how do we understand sustainability? You know, what is actually green? I think that is really a big question. So now we are advancing your SDGs and this and that, and so we also need to. In understand the trade-off, all right? So we have to mention about international collaboration. So if some country that emphasize one aspect, actually they're causing problems for other countries. So that's why internationally, we need to coordinate extremely hard, but for mm -hmm. sustainability. So we really need partnerships, you know, unity and global collaboration let alone the, the concept of sustainability. So my, my question is basically, you know, you're looking after the energy of a particular country. Actually, that is not your advantage. Perhaps, you know, you purchase that energy from another country close by and provide you know, the things that you're not good at. This makes a lot of more sense. That's why, again, 
answering that question and the general idea of sustainability, UN SDGs, we need to collaborate in partnership. So my colleagues worked out, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a couple of suggestions. They called it uh, three C's, something like classification, coordination, and collaboration. So we'll be very pleased to share that study with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. It sounds really good and it's such a great summary for this session. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have completed session one. Thank you all speakers for wonderful talks this morning. And thank you audiences for participating in our sessions by sending questions to us as well. So the session two on clean energy will resume at 2 p.m. in Beijing time or 1 p.m. in Bangkok time. So it will be moderated by Professor Shao and so Secretariat. And so thank you very much again for your participation and see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.